Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Writing your research is the topic of this lecture, and uh, we shall be discussing these eight points in this lecture. Uh, begin and uh, before I read out these eight points, uh, let me make it very clear in the outset that this is the uh, this lecture or these points are actually the practical suggestions for the researchers working in the area of uh, generally and in the area of translation studies. So number one is begin writing early and write a lot all the time. Number two, documentation conventions in the text. Number three, think of the reader. Number four, show a logical structure. Number five, everyone gets stuck. Number six, substantiate or withdraw number seven starting and finishing and number eight last feedback and revision so uh, the first point that is begin writing early and write a lot all the time this is a very important very beneficial uh, practical suggestion in general but the details are you know writing basically is a form of thinking allowed on paper when we write actually we try to uh, you know put our thinking on the paper so this is as a conversation with ourselves as a researcher I mean yourself first as a researcher and for understanding writing is used for understanding remembering distancing yourself from your ideas so there are multiple uh, uh, benefits associated with this uh, activity writing that's why you know it, it 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 this very practical useful suggestion has been uh, emphasized here that begin writing early and write a lot and all the time don't stop writing examine your ideas uh, clearly see them in perspective criticize and develop them so the writing benefits or the most important benefits uh, are these take notes from your uh, early reading course writing summaries is better than taking photocopies so if you are writing for literature review of course you need to uh, you need to go into little uh, further so digest the ideas that you are reading or writing and also synthesize them in a coherent form and uh, show connections between the ideas that you have uh, written and digested them the second point here is the documentation conventions in the text i will take little more time in this documentation conventions in the text uh, for again for practical reason so about the references basic things the documentation of all sources is a must this is a principle uh, that should be uh, kept in mind or uh, in your mind as a researcher except if the idea is general public knowledge so people know that this is a fact people know that this is this is uh, uh, what it is so or it is if it is your own idea so of course for your own idea you don't need to give any reference so these are the basic uh, things about the references there are formats available for giving your references and citation etc so here uh, you name plus date system together with page number if necessary system one of the suggested uh, system here the other is if your university or your faculty or your department has prepared a manual of research you should go for that because you have to actually follow uh, the the manual if it is subscribed or if it is uh, you know prescribed rather from the department and faculty or the university or maybe the department uh, you know prescribe a certain internationally uh, recognized internationally you know accepted uh, format so it depends upon your own situation as a researcher so how to how to give the reference these are again practical aspects so in the main text itself the reference should be given in the main text itself not in the footnote using brackets so reference through the sources as a person or as a work so we have uh, here a few examples for example uh, Tory and within the bracket 1995 and colon and 134 is the page number describes this and then you complete uh, the idea or what you are taking from Tory so remember this is not you are not quoting you are taking the idea you are taking 
something concept from this source and you are referring in this way or in a later paper however Hermans argues now this is another way of of course of actually the phrases it depends upon the uh, the type of phrases that you use for this purpose so in uh, in a later paper however Herman argues in 1999 that and then you complete and in a work style is uh, Lavosia um, and the evidence discussed is this 1998 I mean this uh, these are the few examples and we have more so several authors have made this point and now with the bracket you see CEG Gile 1995 or Gilham 2000A and I will explain this A uh, after some time. Yin 1994, Snell Hormony 1989, and then Colin after that 45 and 69. That suggests the, that actually gives the idea that it is an uh, edited work and it is some maybe the article and these are the pages of the article. So suggest that and then CF also Monday 2001. I will explain uh, the meaning of CF after some time. So yet another example, yet there remain a number of problems with this approach. See further Catford 1965 and then comma Naida 1964 comma and especially Hatim 2001 and full stop within the bracket not outside the bracket. So in the previous examples we, we need to, we need to uh, note that references are given within your own sentence before the full stop. So the bracketed info is placed after author or uh, name or reporting verb at the end of the sentence in case of longer reference. The use of C suggests a direct source which makes the same point as you. And uh, CF as uh, I was uh, I promised to you know explain the CF suggests a less direct reference to a source that can be uh, consulted for comparison so if you are referring to a reference if you are referring to a source a by a reference to a in b from the source has been uh, is not available but it has been quoted in b source b and not holding the original source of course so should be given as follows for example hempel 1952 comma as cited by and uh, this uh, you know bracket is or in Tory 1995 9 claims that uh, so this uh, uh, this 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 the, the Hempel um, as cited by you know or in as cited by or in Tory 90 so Tory actually is the B source and Hempel is the A source which is not available so you are referring to that so include both sources separately in your list of references so when you uh, provide the list of uh, your references at the end of your article or thesis you should include both the sources in that list separately references to two works of the same author if you are referring uh, to two works of the same author so use a and b same author in the same year of course use a and b in gilham for example 2000 a and gilham same 2000 b that means both book have been published in 2000 but there's a and b both in the text and the list of references same way uh, it should be followed uh, referring several times to the same source this is also very important uh, you are referring several times to the same source within the same paragraph or section abbreviation can be used for example uh, and all these abbreviations are actually derived from latin so uh, op site means latin uh, opere citato in the work cited or loc site latin loco citato in the place cited loco and ibit latin ibidium in the same place that in the case that you are uh, referring uh, to one source um, uh, several time uh, within the same paragraph or section or uh, even I think subject etc place references early in the section of your uh, text so you you should you know try to uh, place your references very early in the section of your text you know your list of references work cited is a list of all works you have referred to you have used actually 
the list that you give at the end of your article or at the end of your thesis dissertation that is the list of the work that you have cited used for research now we can talk about the quotations and how to of course quote so as a part of your sentence this uh, there are also ways so see the example number one and two and separate it after a colon see example number three for example uh, example number one is baker claims within bracket 1995 colon 13 that and then of course this is part of your sentence but within uh, you know the the, the quote and quote uh, you you try to you know take the words of the uh, of the author same word verbatim the second is also same this is presumably what baker is implying when she argues and within the bracket and that and then you give uh, the uh, quotations the third example is different that is the separated after a colon baker and within the bracket same makes the following claim colon and then after that you quote so there are uh, you know three different ways of uh, here giving uh, the quote there is another way intended a, a block course quotations of three or more lines if lines are three or more so the uh, the quote should be you know uh, intended so these quotations do not need quotation marks in this case the quotation marks are not required this is how NIDA originally formulated this idea and then colon and then the quotation as you can see this is intended and uh, but it is not you know it is not marked with the quotation marks it is not uh, the quotation marks are not used here in this case and in the end of course you give the reference when quotation should be given this is very important uh, you know thing it should be uh, taken into account uh, for the researchers in general for the researchers in the area of translation studies quote only if and when the actual works are significant or the idea is controversial and of course you are comparing or you are arguing you're giving your own arguments for and against or this, this is a primary data the source actually is pro providing the primary data so you need to quote that or you want to appeal to the authority of the original writer so or prefer but in in other cases prefer uh, paraphrasing in your own words this is uh, always very much uh, you know preferable and liked in, in the arena of uh, uh, translation studies research why uh, making your work a patchwork of quotations but if you uh, accumulate a lot of quotations here and there and your work is uh, full of all, the, all these uh, quotations actually the first impression and I think rightly so is that uh, your contribution where is your contribution you don't have any contribution you're just taking the quotations from here and there and you're just arranging them and of course giving some kind of sequence three think of the reader k-i-s-s kiss and tell so k-i-s-s stands for keep it simple and short so writing is communicating with yourself and also others so con consider your reader uh, when you start uh, your first draft this is very important so how can you fetch and keep the reader interest do you want them to accept uh, new information that is the considering you know think of the reader when you think of the reader you ask yourself these questions do you want them to change their beliefs or their behavior after reading uh, your document? And uh, your, reader, reader not, your reader will not accept uh, uh, your claims uh, if they, number one, cannot trust you, uh, think you are careless, uh, your uh, tables uh, did not match your text, your calculations are wrong, you have not shown enough evidence, and you have overlooked counter evidence uh, you know you reported other research in a biased way again you know your reader will not uh, trust you or will not accept whatever you say so in this case that you reported other research in a biased way of course you have missed important references and you contradict yourself in your writing 
uh, in the area of academic research, you know, they are, they are not common general readers, they are specialist readers, so they have these cross uh, uh, assessment, so they can, I think, find out such things. Your categories, arguments are uh, illogical, uh, you have plagiarized from someone else, are you making big claims in the area of research, you know, uh, you know, being humble is a basic uh, characteristic. Okay, a research report. What is a research report? It's not a chronological record of what you have done week by week. It's not a historical narrative, but a logical story. So you are telling a story of intellectual journey, not a, you know, a historical journey or uh, that, you know, that you started in this way and in the middle, what, what happened and how did you respond to what happened and so on. No, it is actually intellectual journey. It should be sequenced and ordered in, an, in, a, in a kind of intellectual, I um, mean, logical, uh, logical uh, order. Tell readers main points of your work early and clearly. Okay, main points uh, in opening and closing statements. This is very important. Main points in opening and closing statements. Why you are telling them this or that, you know, you should also give the justification. How does it relate to your claim? Very important. Uh, make links between various sections. This uh, is, uh, you know, very important uh, 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 thing that will fetch the attention of the reader and they will take interest in your writing. Well chosen expressive phrases or striking new terms or metaphors should be used. Readers like clarity in arguments or description, style and layout. This is also very important. Number four is show a logical structure. So typical general structure is like that statement of problem, uh, consideration of what others have said about it, proposed solution and evaluation of it and then the conclusions or, or this one, description of relevant background, statement of main thesis or claim, evidence in favor of main claim, consideration of competing claims and or uh, counter evidence and then conclusion and the structure of empirical research uh, can be like that it's not a fixed specific flexible introduction of the problem its significance critical survey of previous research relevant theoretical framework and key concepts methodology empirical data results of the analysis discussion of the results and conclusion then proposals and then implications Everyone gets stuck. Of course, this is a human activity, all the human activities, and everyone gets stuck. This is a this is a universal truth, and a uh, lot of research have been uh, done uh, in the area of uh, 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 you know translation research as well, and in the area of psychology, in the area of sociology, all other uh, sciences that try to study the human behavior. So this uh, this is uh, this uh, here also happens with the with the researchers. So we have very much uh, research based practical uh, suggestions uh, to get out of this stuck up situation. So um, revise already written part of research and draw a mind map of the bit you are struggling with. What is the problem uh, that you are stuck up uh, struggling with in, in your in this chapter in that section or in your research in general. Look back uh, over your research diary. Uh, write a summary of where you have got uh, to so far for yourself, of course. Write just anything at all uh, to tell you where the problems is. This is a kind of thinking aloud. You are just writing to tell you what is the problem. Because when you detach uh, yourself, your mind, you just uh, bring out the problem from your mind on the paper. You know, the perspective becomes a little easier and clear and uh, you can uh, think uh, in, a, in a better way. So write regardless of the style or grammar or typing mistake, whatever, whatever, it's because you want to understand uh, the problem and then of course to uh, find the solution. Stop working on the section that you get sub stuck. Start somewhere else that seems easier. Maybe you can shift to another section chapter and uh, start working on that. Talk about your feelings to your friends, supervisor, and of course, uh, other people around you with whom you are comfortable. Go for a walk, listen to some music, take a break. So there are many, uh, you know, small, big suggestions. Set yourself routine. 
special chair arrangement of the things you know you can i um, mean divert yourself and then you start uh, uh, you know paying attention to these things uh, go to uh, get to know uh, your own work rhythm you know morning night or place maybe your prime time is in the morning or maybe in the middle or at night when there is a silence and so on writing the first sentence for next sessions to avoid the fear of writer before the blanket sheet this is uh, uh, this happens when uh, some people when they start uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the early morning when they start writing and they find how to start the first sentence which is always better to write the first sentence at the end of your previous day so that when you start your work early in the morning you have the first sentence in front of you set achievable sub goals for example you know my goal is to complete this paragraph or complete this half of the chapter and so on set deadlines so i need to complete this section by let's say no the this date or within one month or within this or that look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself aloud that you can do it. psychological boosting uh, can also be part of uh, of the technique used to uh, cope with the writer's block now this number six is substantiate or withdraw you know the claims the arguments hypothesis and academic writing these are essential elements uh, in the academic research so take care in formatting the main claim in the first draft when you are making a claim or hypothesis or something like that so you have to be very careful because at the end you have to prove it or otherwise so a claim and argument system must be substantiated supported with evidences and logic or else should be withdrawn so you may make a claim but then you discover that your claim does not stand uh, you know is not uh, is not supported uh, properly with the evidences or arguments so uh, either of course you you prove it or you substantiate it or you withdraw this from this claim answering question that may occur in the minds of your readers so because the readers they may have a question in their mind when they read your evidence your arguments and of course to try to cover all these uh, uh, the replies to all these questions provide ground ground for evidence which is called warrant so a general principle that justifies the relevance of evidence to the claim so is called a warrant so let's take this example claim it's been raining evidence the streets are wet warrant the streets are always wet when it's been raining everyone knows it so warrant the qualification it means it's been raining here in this locality within the last few hours so these are the uh, the things that uh, you know, the, the claim should be supported with evidence warrant and qualification okay starting and uh, finishing is the uh, starting uh, is with the introduction so should be written at the end this is the first practical uh, advice that in introduction should be written at the end but we have five moves uh, in, the, in the introduction Four one start with something that will catch the reader's attention so that something could be some anecdote some story some joke some rhetorical uh, you know uh, sentence uh, or some uh, something like that move number two give the context so of course you have to give the context of the claim of the problem of the phenomena that you are going to study move number three state the problem that this is the problem and number four justify your work and number five state your aim this is or these are five moves and they can guide us how to write the introduction at the end uh, give the organization of course when you finish all these five moves at the end of your introduction you give the organization of your work that you, uh, this is how you are going to uh, treat your work chapter one chapter two and so on flexibility in how moves are realized you know this is again uh, you know these are not fixed rules these are uh, good uh, rules and suggestions but they are flexible 
scan introductions of early, uh, early uh, already done research work so you can also see more examples how people have uh, prepared their introduction conclusions it's a mirror image of introduction always try to uh, and the good readers they always try to uh, read the introduction first and then jump to they jump to the conclusions because they know that the conclusions are mirror image of the introductions so we have four moves here move number one look back of course looking back what you have done and of course you know you have mentioned briefly or in detail somewhere in uh, the previous pages move to claim significance in the area and theme now uh, this is also very important that your work has a very significance in the area or in in the in the in the theme that you are working in and assess your own work we will talk about assessing your work in detail in a separate lecture and then suggest follow-up research this is also very important conclusion that uh, the the fruit of your uh, conclusion should be you know some suggestion for further research in that same direction the last point feedback and revision writing is not a linear process you do not write you know be ready to compose lots of drafts and revise them this is very important yeah, maybe you write one draft and you destroy it and then you write and then so on um, Einstein's uh, saying is uh, very interesting he said all you need in order to do great research is paper a pencil and a paste paper basket that means you know you have to write uh, you know have to write one thing maybe more than once or maybe, maybe many times uh, fish for feedback you can take fish uh, feedback from uh, friends peers teachers supervisors this depend upon uh, the culture as well our culture is totally different i don't know but this is the culture where people are open minded and uh, they know that uh, the uh, intellectual property rights are uh, uh, should be respected and if uh, you are sharing your work with someone else they will not misuse it or they will uh, help you uh, you know according to your abilities uh, in a very positive way so you know we can adjust this uh, this suggestion in our own culture okay now the revising from four different point of view so feedback and revision so overall structure and logic you know you should revise your work from this aspect readers friendliness make yourself put yourself in the shoes of the reader and try to revise your work and then proofreading is another very uh, uh, important aspect if because there are problems with proofreading so other aspect uh, you know can very easily be marginalized so proofreading is very important the visual aspects so as for the visual aspects and concern we are talking about the layouts we are talking about the numbering of the sections uh, do they correspond to the contents we are talking about revising the table graph are they clear and use of the italics and bold face fonts lying spacing and so on uh, so for the scheme that we are using for referencing citation uh, and uh, uh, you know the the uh, the proper uh, uh, keeping the, uh, the the format intact as for the references uh, are concerned and so on so visual aspects are and these are also very important so dear students with this uh, this lecture ends take very good care of yourself assalamu alaikum